See, I knew BMW still knows how to create beautiful looking cars because they just dropped the new X5 and the X6. We're going to focus on the X5 in this video, talk about the design from the front side and rear and also, of course, compare it to the pre or the current generation. But before we do that, and also the interior, of course, we need to talk about that because I think you know what I'm going to say about the interior. But anyway, let's talk about some of the spec and tech before we jump into Photoshop and talk about the design. This is the car and driver article right here. We have a couple of new powertrains. We have a new turbocharged inline six that boosts the base 40i models to 375 horsepower and 398 pound-feet of torque, along with the M60i's 4.4 liter V8. BMW also adds a 48 volt hybrid system to their models, which I think is really good because we have now 100 more horsepower in the 50e, and you also have an extended uh, electric driving range, which is up by 10 miles from the previous from the current generation or the previous generation they're talking a little bit about the design here which i'm going to talk more about when we jump into photoshop and you also have the new dash in the interior with a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster and 14.9 inch tv touchscreen right in the middle look at this the twin turbo 4.4 liter v8 in the m60i still makes a massive 527 horsepower and 553 pound feet of torque and these engines as i said has a 48 volt hybrid system with an electric motor integrated in the eight speed automatic transmission and that's exactly what you want to have in internal combustion engines you want to combine the the raw power of internal combustion with the push the launch from an electric motor in addition to having that electricity also make the tr the uh, transmission and the shift the gear shifts a lot smoother so i think that's a really good idea x drive all-wheel drive still remains standard on all bmws except for the base xs drive 40i which has a rear wheel drive and then you have the x drive 45e which has a total output of 483 horsepower a hundred more than before now talking about the wheels every x5 and x6 cam comes standard with 20 inch wheels which is okay but in this case you obviously want to go for the optional 22 inch wheels with the performance tires to have those tires fit nicely in the in the wheelhouses of the car it will be a little more expensive than the 2023 models as you can see here the 2024 base x5 starts at $66,195 and that's up by $3,600 and if you want the all-wheel drive you're gonna have to add an, an additional $2,300 and it seems like it tops out with the m60i at just over $90,000 for this x5 but you do get a lot of power power and a lot of technology for your money. So let's jump into Photoshop here and let's have some fun and analyze these designs. The new X5, compare it to uh, the, the previous generation. We have the old one up here. The thing is, I thought the X5, it was one of the last remaining good looking BMWs in their lineup. I think the, the X5 really looks good. It, it is still a handsome BMW with a very confident front face and the grills are pretty big but as you can see they, they fit better proportionally in the front end of the x5 because i think it has to do with it sitting higher and being an suv you have a larger front area so the grills can actually take up a larger surface than if you have for example an um, a 3 series or a 7 series where they actually are a lot bigger than this and at the same time they have less space to kind of fill in the front and face because it's not as high as an, as, as an SUV. But I thought that these graphics are really good looking. I like this type of graphics on the old one. It reminds me of the uh, old um, uh, BMW E46, E39, M5, M3 situation in the lower uh, part of the front end so looking at the new one it becomes a little bit more static it becomes a little less uh, stylized in the lower part we have a lot of horizontal lines here which i don't think is a bad thing it doesn't look better or worse than the previous generation in my opinion i think it looks still looks handsome and still has this typical BMW face that uh, shows that it will get you from point A to B no matter the road conditions or the weathers that's the kind of face you want to have in a BMW and I think that's been lacking recently but it's still intact in the X5 thankfully it's like the designers of BMW they they're they're like wild horses you kind of have to 
restrain them a little bit, <laughs> you know, train them to take it easy on the lines and the styling and go back to the basics. Take a deep breath, go back to the basics, what you learned in design school and apply that onto the designs. And I feel like that's pretty much what's going on here. This is a very handsome design and we have a lot of squarish uh, shapes in the lower part which looks good and you can see that we have zero chamfers around the headlights and this feels like it's a new trend chamfers are going away i don't we, we did have a little bit of a chamfer here it's white so you can barely see it on this model but i i do miss chamfers i think chamfers adds uh, a little bit of uh, quality to the design because a chamfer like you have right here in the in the previous generation it to me it says that we intended for the headlight to sit here so we made it a base for it to sit on and same with the grill here you have this chamfer here it kind of bring it, it gives the different graphic features in the front end and all around the car a specific uh, purpose to be there while in the new x5 it kind of sits flush all the way with the body of the car which doesn't look bad but it kind of looks like to me it feels like something is missing when you don't have those chamfers there but thankfully we still have a chamfer right here underneath the grill so the grill still feels like it's the exact same shape it's probably it probably is and it still has the same chamfer going underneath there to create a nice foundation for the big grill to rest on now looking at it from a side view and then we're going to look at the rear i have some things to say about these taillights uh, when we look at the rear in just a second. So looking at the side view, we do have some new uh, styling features. For example, this piece right here is new in the, let's go to the right layer here so you can actually see what I'm doing. This little piece, the, I, I don't know if this is functional, I think it is. It looks like there's there are some holes in, in there that, you know, the air goes in here and then kind of vents out this way. However, I'm not sure I like this silver piece that we have going on because it clashes a lot with everything else in this specific area. Everything else is so clean. We have this line here and we have this gorgeous line down here as well going up this way and then we have this piece that can you see how it kind of clashes with the with the overall surfacing in that area i think this treatment was a lot cleaner in the previous generation and now you can see that the headlights has become a lot slimmer as well from a side view so we have a lot slimmer headlights while they went downwards a little bit in the previous generation, which I think looks, looked really good for the headlights, having those confident eyeballs in the front end. But other than that, it feels like it's the same X5. It feels like a mild facelift, because from what I can see, everything above this point, the greenhouse looks like it's exactly the same, which is, again, not a bad thing. We still have the Hofmeister kink intact, thankfully. Thank you, BMW, for that. And it looks like these are, I can't see if we can zoom in, it looks like we have a 22 here on the tire. So these are the gorgeous 22 inch performance wheels with the performance tires on it as well. So let's look at the rear view and then the interior because there are a couple of things I want to mention there as well. So looking at the rear view, thank you BMW for bringing back some dynamic feeling in the taillights that's been lacking for so long in bmws and this is what we want to see we want to see some dynamic features and graphics in the taillights because it is a bmw it's supposed to be a dynamic machine the a driver's machine so we have going from thin here into this thick beautiful l shape that we have in the taillights i really like these this design this new design comparing it to the old one the old one is same thing here it looked really good and we have the same kind of housing that we have in the in the new one as well so the outline looks exactly the same which look maybe looks a little weird in this section because it feels like there's too much mass here so i would like to cut it something like this and remove this piece same thing in the bottom right here, remove this piece. But as I said, I think this is sort of a facelift for the exterior and focusing more on the um, on the powertrains, just doing some minor changes so they want to save some money and not create a whole brand new tailgate and a brand new fender just to fit some new uh, headlights. They redesigned the interiors but kept the outline, the whole assembly, the outline of the assembly the same. So 
this looks a lot more dynamic than, for example, the BMW X3, which I don't understand what is going on with those taillights. Some of you told me in the comments that it looks like a, like a halo weapon, and I googled it, and it looks, it really looks like one of those, uh, I think it's called energy swords or something. I think maybe the BMW designers, they, they played a little too much video games on their lunch breaks, playing Halo and then coming back. They have this Halo sword in their minds, so they designed the X3 taillight like a Halo sword. This looks a lot better, both in the front and in the rear. Alright, so last but not least, let's have a look at the interior. Up here we have the old interior, down here we have the new one. And you can see what the big difference is here, can't you? I think you know what I'm gonna say, and that is that we have big iPads on the dash, which is the trend of this decade to uh, remove any sort of housing for the gauge cluster and just have a big screen here. But, you know, in this case, I still prefer the old one because I think this is a gorgeous looking interior and we have a nice display sitting deep inside here and a nice housing and we have some nice uh, materials all over this car. We have some nice wood and then contrasting with this black and then some the wood coming back here with this gorgeous color of the seats and the leather as well. This is a fantastic looking interior. So looking at the new one, it's still a very good looking interior. I can kind of forgive BMW for putting this big TV in here and uh, not giving any shelter to the to the gauge cluster because the rest of the interior looks so good. I think we have a, a symmetry here. So if we put a, a, a line like this right in the middle, we have the same kind of design going in here and creating this air vent on this side that we have going in the same direction on the other side. And I really think that looks really cool. And at the same time, BMW driver's machines, right? So everything is tilted a little bit towards the driver. You can see that here in this angle. So this center console is actually tilted just a tiny little bit towards the driver on both of these, obviously. And I think that's a cool detail that uh, BMW is stuck with to have uh, the, the controls and the, the gauges, everything facing towards the driver. So well done, BMW. I think BMW is coming back when it comes to design. They they're released a couple of uh, cars recently that feels like they're on the right track. And I'm even starting to like the M2 a lot more than when I first saw it. And then we have the 3 liter CSL, just a fantastic looking machine. So I think they're on the right track. I'm looking forward to see what the X5M is going to look like and how much power that's going to have if these have almost 600 horsepower. It's going to be a nuts SUV. Let me know what you think about the new X5 in the comments below. Do you like this refresh or do you prefer the old one? Let me know in the comments below.